if the seat needs to get a little lukewarm, <laughs> okay, it might get lukewarm. How much are you spending in ads? About two fifty a month. That's why you're not tracking your conversions. You're not spending enough money. You're having some luck on this, but we're not okay. doing pretty well on this, and we are drowning. Right. With a twenty thousand dollar revenue. More money, more problems. More money, more expenses. <laughs> this is just really all bad because there's nothing about this that's relevant. There are no notes I'm being ready. taken here. I didn't know we could. I said this wasn't going to be a hot seat. I don't like your logo. The website needs to be redone. Okay. This is 100% unacceptable. There is an energy inside of you that's built for this. I changed my whole business model okay. since being with you. You've generated in revenue a million dollars. And here you are still getting mentorship and coaching. Hey, you guys, and welcome to another episode of the Full Transparency Podcast with Donnie Wiggins. And I got to tell you, I'm so excited. If you saw the episode that we dropped last week, you saw that I did a live coaching session with two amazing entrepreneurs, one aspiring and one kind of already on her way. She's made some big things happen. And you guys enjoyed that episode. The feedback was so amazing from that episode and the idea of it that we decided to do two in one day, <laughs> we decided to bring it back to back, back to back. Listen, I cannot tell you how much I love being a business coach. I remember um, back in 2022, I was going through a transition in my own business. And there was a moment where... People convinced me to stop being a business coach and just do courses, just do courses, course, 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 and don't do business coaching because it's so hard to scale if you're working with people on a one-on-one -on -one level. And I went through 2022 and I made a, I made a really significant amount of income. But as I was going through that year, I felt so unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. I felt so unfulfilled and I couldn't figure it out. You know, that was the year that I purchased my mom, her own condo. That was the year uh, that I was thriving in business. That was the year that I literally made more money than I had ever made at that time before. So I'm like, I was in at that time. I was also in a relationship that, you know, was was OK. And I use that term loosely because the relationship is over now. But when I was feeling that way, I couldn't understand why everything seemed to be going so well. Yet I felt so unfulfilled. It's like I'd have this super productive day and we're knocking things out on the on the things to do list. Like everything's happening the way it's supposed to happening. But still, there's this feeling of emptiness inside of me. And one day I said, you know what it is? I miss coaching. I miss being people's coach. I miss the environment in which I can give entrepreneurs feedback on their business and it worked particularly in a one-on-one -on -one setting because we still did the podcast and we had some group opportunities and all this stuff. But it's that, that, that intimacy in coaching that I enjoy so much. And when I brought coaching back, well, and I never stopped, I just stopped accepting new clients. I maintained the, the clients that I had um, at that time and still have. Um, when I brought it back and opened those doors to now uh, coach again last year, and be more selective in who I coach, the fulfillment instantly came back to me. And since then, we've launched things and programs like Actionable CEO, the mentorship community, uh, where there's a couple of hundred entrepreneurs who are there, uh, many of which come every single Tuesday to uh, join a, mentor, a live mentorship session. Um, and we've been able to expand and develop. And I had the idea to showcase my coaching style, how I coach, the conversations that we would have, I don't get to work with people as much in the beginning part of their journey anymore on a one-on-one -on -one level outside of Actionable CEO. So I thought, you know what? Full transparency is my platform. Let's be transparent and have some coaching happen with some members of my Actionable CEO community. And so here today, I have two lovely entrepreneurs uh, right next to me. I have Miss Joya Owens, welcome to the platform, Miss so Joya. And right next to her, we have Asia Carpenter. I'm going to let you guys or you ladies um, introduce yourselves. Awesome. Well, I'll, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is okay. Joya Owens, and I am the founder of the Friendship Society. I'm a music business 
coach and consultant, first singer and songwriter. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is my primary day to day coach and consulting for for music artists. OK. Yeah. And we're going to dive deeper into that. So I understand it. Uh, I've heard you talk about this before, but I always have to get a deeper understanding yeah. from you because you're evolving as yes. well. Yes. All right. Asia. My name is Asia Carpenter. I am the owner and creative director for Divine Dance Studio located in Marietta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. This is our 10th year in business, and I'm grateful because I get to do what I love every day. Okay, your 10th year in business. I love that for you. Joya, how long have you been in business? I've been in business since 2021, but I started the company in 2018. Okay. Yeah. Um, you started the company in 2018, but you've been in business since 2021. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yep. So I formed this company essentially as a shell company for a publishing deal. I got signed with Cobalt in 2018. So I had no idea what the friendship society would be other than just serving for my publishing company. But I knew I wanted to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. So in 2021, that's when I decided that I wanted to be um, a coach, do coaching consulting. Okay. Yep. Uh, do you strictly do coaching and consulting right now? Yes. Okay. You mean, is that my only mm-hmm. source of income? Mm-hmm. No, I, um, I'm an analyst. So I also do, uh, contracting work as a, as a data analyst as well. Is that, uh, contracting work? Yes. Okay. So essentially you still work. Yes. For contracts. Okay. Yes. And let me go up here real quick. Hold on one second. Let me get real clear. We got Joya. I am just going to be taking notes as we are going throughout this episode. Um, you'll see me taking notes and doing some research, depending on what you guys uh, express to me that your challenges are. So okay. I'm paying attention. I am here. I just don't want to forget anything. Okay. Okay. Joya, you started yes. your business in 2022, essentially. Why did you go down the lane of becoming a music business consultant? Tell me about the experience that you had uh, to qualify you as, as such. <laughs> okay, thank you for asking because that's a great question. So I started in the business. <laughs> not, she, she is not going <laughs> to thank you for Well, thank you for asking, Miss <laughs> Denitra Wiggins. That was an excellent question. Why don't I answer that question? Girl, we are going to talk. The really? way that we talk, okay? Thank this you. Is, listen, be yourself, both of you guys. Be yourself. I, I had to tell the last two entrepreneurs this, too. Okay. The hot seat is David's show. Okay. Okay? The, everybody comes in here thinking that they're about to be on the hot seat. And <laughs> I love the hot seat so much. I cannot wait to do another episode. But the people who come to the hot seat are signing up for the hot seat, okay? They know oh, what it is. I would not surprise you guys with the hot seat. This is just coaching. It's transparent coaching. If the seat needs to get a little lukewarm, (laughs) okay, it might get lukewarm. Okay. But that's how coaching with me really can get. And it doesn't have to. Let's just see what it is. So, okay, ma'am, I'm back. I was, it wasn't (laughs) shade. I swear it wasn't shade. Um, no, but I started in the business as a songwriter and recording artist And um, it was very fulfilling. It's always been my dream. I love my community very much. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of hardships as an artist, a lot of hardships. Um, The career in music spans about 20 plus years. And I'm just now within the last seven years seeing like a coasting where I can coast. So I never wanted an artist to go through what I went through Mm -hmm. ever. So I decided that I might as well be a solution to the problem. So I wasn't trying to be disruptive. I just wanted to be a solution, but I think it is a little disruptive. Okay. So let's talk about some of this disruption. What do you consult music artists about and what areas? Everything from starting out. So my main thing is that I want artists to understand publishing. I want them to understand their intellectual property, and I want them to understand how to code and encrypt their music before they put it on social platforms, before they put it on, you know, like um, third-party platforms like TuneCore or anything like that. There's a lot of 
things that go into the file formats of music that artists don't understand, and that's how they lose a lot of their royalties. Yes, the music is uploaded, and we can stream it on Spotify, but it doesn't belong to you. So you got 66,000 streams pushing 200,000 streams, but you never received a check, Mm, which is insanity. Like Spotify. From anybody. Dang. Yeah. So independent artists could literally be out here uploading their own music and they take off. They deserve a check for that. Right. Yes. Okay. So I might be an independent artist (laughs) (laughs) who deserves a check. Uh, this also, this is for anybody who uploads any publishable type of, um, material on the internet. I love that. There's, there's a good place because I have, um, and you may want to consider, we'll talk more, Okay. but even outside of artists, uh, let's, let's, let's get to that later. Okay. So you consult with music artists specifically yes publishing education yep intellectual property ownership yes and how to code and encrypt their music basically how to select the right upload in the right file formats so yes. they get paid yep the intent for all of this is for them to get paid yes and then diversify we could talk about that you know when i'm coaching them i'm like we can talk about that at another time mm-hmm. but first let's just get the ip right on the music because that has to be right in order for it to lead into other things like licensing and sync placements and commercials and, you know, just gigging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What helped you to develop your level of understanding about these, th- these three core pillars that you consulted in? Um, early on in my career, I had like an insane drive and work ethic. Coming from Detroit, being in New York City, I was like lost. So I knew nothing else but just to be a worker bee. But executives, lawyers, they liked that. So they liked the hunger in me. So I was quickly transitioning from recording because it just wasn't working out. You were a recording artist? Yep. Okay. Signed Singing? To, yep. Okay. Signed to Universal. Okay. And um, I loved it. It was really nice. But it wasn't my thing. It wasn't my zhuzh. I was really miserable. Mm-hmm. And so um, I found writing. And so I started to work with other, like, managers and, you know, things like that. So I think I got bitten by the business bug early. Mm-hmm. And then once everything started, the bottom dropped out with Universal. So I started wondering what happened, what happened in this city, what were, you know, what did we do wrong? Mm -hmm. So essentially I was out on my own, Mm -hmm. but I was signed to a major recording label. But my day-to-day reality was that I was really handling everything myself. Mm -hmm. And so whenever something went awry, I would always say, let me see the paperwork. Let me, you know, let me see what happened okay, why does this say that? And Mm -hmm. so I just developed an acumen for it early on in my career. How is what you do different from what a a music attorney, an entertainment attorney might do? Now that's a good question, Donnie. Mm -hmm. So, and I asked myself that early on, like, oh, you could be a manager because a lot of people would be like, why don't you just manage? Mm -hmm. No, because... I want to teach artists about how to have tenure in the business. I want to teach them about what, what I've, you know, what was my saving grace, like doing commercials, doing tours, you know, touring back, doing backgrounds, doing like just the gamut. I've probably had every deal under the sun except for a 360. So I wanted to find my place in an artist's career or their life where I didn't have like a dog in the fight where they could be like, oh man, she's trying to get me for my publishing Mm -hmm. or, oh man, she's going to cut a deal with them and get money off the top. Mm -hmm. No. So I just kind of try to remain in a neutral place. But that still doesn't tell me how this is different from what uh, an entertainment attorney would do. Because I would imagine I've, I've, Long time ago was an artist. (laughs) I know. Had my own happenings with uh, music industry, labels, entertainment attorneys. Yes. And 
some of this information is covered by an entertainment attorney. So why would I choose you instead of an entertainment attorney? Yeah, that's a good one because, well, the other thing about that is what I want essentially artists to do is let me walk them to the door. Let me tell you about the nuances, even with an attorney, not to say all attorneys are bad, but I've had deals where I've literally talked to an attorney, had the attorney tell me this is what's on the paperwork and it's not there at all. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I want to be the person that's the liaison between the artist and everybody. The The thing that makes me different from a, an attorney is you should seek legal counsel because I don't have the expertise in, in legalities. But an attorney's not going to be able to tell you about the nuances with sag after either. So there are different things that I can help you with, like per diem, like being on tour, like what to ask for, like how to negotiate it, like how to, you know what I'm saying, put yourself out there. And I don't think that while the attorney has the information on the legal side, there are many nuances that they're not knowledgeable of, unless they were like an artist turned attorney. You started in 2022. What was your revenue in 2022? For the year. In 2022, that was my big year. It was, I almost hit 50. 50,000? Yeah. Okay. And 2023? 2023, right under 20,000, if that. It was horrible. What changed? So much. Um, And I can't blame it all on business, even though... When I came, but when when I got to Actionable CEO, that's when I (laughs) understood how much I was missing. Shout out to Actionable CEO. (laughs) I promise you guys, I didn't pay them to be here. They didn't pay me to be here. But I did choose Actionable CEO members to be here. So I can't I can't help it that it just gives (laughs) everything it's supposed to give. Let's get it. It does. So you got to Actionable CEO. Yes. And I was like, okay, I came to Actionable CEO because I was like, okay, Donnie's going to teach me about marketing Mm. and she'll tell me about funnels. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm here. Like, let's come on, give me this information so I could Mm -hmm. get to going. But life started lifing and we had all kinds of problems, like family problems, you know, It was just like a lot of issues, deaths. It was crazy. So my life was like turning upside down, like Mm -hmm. literally. I had been in and out of emergency. All of this, but what the crazy part about that was I got I got to you right before everything started happening. Mm -hmm. So before you got to coaching us on and I don't want to give too much away, but before you got to coaching (laughs) us on the like We did talk about funnels. We did talk about marketing. We did Mm -hmm. talk about pricing. We did talk about like the structure of the company, but we started to talk about the mind Mm -hmm. and baby, it got me all the way together. (laughs) So I, you know, so yeah, that's what, what change was personal, but also I didn't have all the knowledge that I needed. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I'm honest, I was just getting referrals that first year. Okay. So your business has been a, if you know, you know, kind of thing, because I know you and I know what you're capable of, I could refer potential client, but there wasn't any kind of strategic marketing or messaging or anything like that. Mm -mm. Okay. Nope. And so now we're in 2024. Mm -hmm. Have you made money this year? Yes. Yes. Let's talk about it. (laughs) Yes. So, um, I have. I'm not going to count it, but I'm going to count it. I'll throw it in there. I changed my pricing model since I've been in actionable CEO. Mm -hmm. Actually, Asia and I were talking about it. Hey, Asia. (laughs) (laughs) I changed my whole business model since being with you. And I had a chance to break it up to high ticket, but high ticket where it can make sense and also a longer time like a longer tenure of me working with, but by me changing it and also by me um, changing my messaging per like some of the things we learned in our coaching sessions, it helped me change my content. Mm. And so I actually started getting small businesses 
organizations that were nonprofits coming to me like, we want you to help us with our music sector. And people like, oh, I want to learn about licensing and sync so I could we talked about collaboration. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed people in the community that I knew from um, like the sync world. And I was like, you know, come on, let's collaborate. Cause it's not my area of expertise, mm -hmm. but I want us to hook up so that we can teach the community. So it was all sorts of stuff, Donnie. Like I could sing the praises of actionable CEO all day. Cause it's out Asia and I were talking. I'm like, it's nowhere you, you're going to know. You're never going to know what it yeah. it's done for me professionally yeah. or personally. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Now your seat can't get quite lukewarm. <laughs> no, I, I like what I hear so far. So you've been making money 2024. Yeah. What are you projected to earn this year? What am I projected? Mm -hmm. I'm projected to earn a hundred. Based on what? Based on the new pricing strategy. And based on the fact that although I had other things in place, my marketing, when you were telling us how in the world are you going to achieve the goal if you're just doing it from one platform? Mm -hmm. So I had to stretch that out and figure how was I going to market on LinkedIn, on TikTok, mm -hmm. on Facebook, through my text marketing, mm -hmm. through my email marketing. Mm -hmm. So with all of that in place, I... But full transparency, for sure, I do need to tighten up, I guess, the systemization, if that's a word. Like, I need to tighten up the system. The way it's running isn't quite as efficient as I want it to be. Okay. We're going to get to that. We're okay. going to get to the challenges. Okay. Um, but 2024 is a goal, not yes. a projection. Okay. Uh, so when I use the term projection, mm -hmm. I mean that based on this data and analytic based on this data and this analytics based on previous year performance or yep. a period pr previous time period performance i can project meaning i can kind of guess yes that this is what will happen in this year right yep um, based on current, and you factor in current activity if you've added any kind of new marketing if you've started any, launched any new programs and offers mm -hmm. without that kind of data or without relying on that kind of data, then we're just setting a goal. Got meaning, it. This is what I want to do. And in order to do that, then I'm going to go through these steps, this action, blah, blah, blah. Okay. okay. So we have a goal of $100,000, which you've not reached in your business yet. You're working as a contractor. Um, is that something that you plan to continue to do? Or are you waiting for your business to take off? No. So I want to go ahead and go full fledged into my business by July of this year. So that's my plan. Hmm. I know. Tell it, me, is tell that me too why July advantageous? Um, I was just trying to give myself some time to um, implement it. And also I was factoring in personal things that happen maybe around the summertime, like moving, you're moving? Yeah. Out of state? No, just from one place to, to another. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. No. I mean, you said you were trying to give yourself some time. Yeah. Um, that's four months from now. Yeah. And you were on, you have you have a goal to make $100,000. Right. I would for sure say it's not time to start thinking about quitting our job just yet. Okay. Why, you know, I, and I asked that question on purpose because 100% of the employed CEO entrepreneurs that I know, they're leaving their job. <laughs> all right. And we need to do that. We needed to leave it yesterday. In fact, mentally, I've already checked out of this job. I'm just waiting on you to give me the green light. What's the framework, Donnie? So I can take this framework on today, implement it by Monday, and we, we quit by next Friday. Right. And so I always want to make sure that your expectations are mm -hmm. in alignment with one what's real, what's possible, but also two, what's actually happening in okay. your work ethic. Okay. Understood. I don't believe that July is your quit date. Okay. Prove me wrong. I don't know. I'm, this is, <laughs> I'm just a coach. I'm not like, you know, the overseer of all things. I am just a coach. Right. Um, and I'm going to give you my feedback. And my feedback is based on the number of entrepreneurs that I've worked with over now the last 12 years. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I also don't believe it's necessary. It's not always necessary to quit your job. Okay. Your consultant. Yeah. Your contractor. Right. You accept the contract when you want to accept the contract. You don't when you don't. Right. When you have that type of setup, I recommend that when your business starts picking up in revenue, the money that you're making via your contracts is your own personal investment back into your business. The business. It's okay. just extra money. Like um, whenever you're given an opportunity, my recommendation is that you don't choose to build your business out of distress. Yes. When I first started building my first legitimate business, I didn't have the luxury of not building it out of some type of distress, financial mm -hmm. at okay. that, right? Um, but when I started to journey through my career and started to pick up some traction and having success, when I would start new businesses, I'm like, oh, starting with a little bit of success, with a little bit of money, with a little bit of breathing room makes this so much easier yeah. than me having to count every single coin that comes into my company. Yeah. Okay. Asia, you started your business uh, 10 years ago. Was yes. that uh, 2014 exactly? Yes. Okay. And tell me, uh, hold on, this is your Divine Dance Studio. Yes. Is that the name of it? Yes. Divine Dance Studio. Okay. Is it divine? It is like, divine. <laughs> of course. Explain that to me. Um, the start, getting started. Mm-hmm. So I got started, uh, I graduated with my MBA and opened the studio the same month. Mm -hmm. I got started by implementing dance and gymnastics programs in daycares and after school programs mm -hmm. and just built that revenue and that clientele base until I could open a brick and mortar. I actually got started in Tennessee okay. and I was open there for five years before I moved here and reopened here. Did you go to school in Tennessee? I did. What school? I went to UTC. Oh, you can stop recording. <laughs> They're Auburn graduates. No, <laughs> they, they didn't fool with y'all Tennessee schools. I know. Um, no, no, it's okay, Brie, keep going. Um, okay, so you started in the city that you went to school in, mm -hmm. and you built it kind of as a, as a uh, after-school program, extracurricular activity. Yes. The Brick and Mortar Divine Dance Studio. When did that launch? 2015. 2015. Oh, Okay. And has it always been in Marietta at that location? Oh, no. So I launched in 2015 in Tennessee, um, the brick and mortar there. Okay. And then I moved here in 2018 or 2019 and launched in Marietta then. Okay. 18? 19. 19. Sure. No. One of those years. <laughs> One of those years. It's okay. All righty. And let's talk since you've been here in Atlanta. Okay. Okay. Um, we're only going to go a couple of years back. 2020, do you remember your revenue? 2020, revenue was probably around 250. 250? Mm -hmm. Okay. We got to be clear. Yes. All right. 250,000. Because of that revenue, tell me about 2019. So 2019 revenue was very low, which I remember because all of the loans, the COVID loans were based off of your 2019 revenue. Mm -hmm. So that's how I know. Actually, I did move in 2019 here. Okay. Um, because we were in that transition period, revenue was something close to like 75,000. Okay. Was it higher before that? Yes, it was higher before that in Tennessee. Okay. Were you typically a six figure business in Tennessee? Yes. Okay. So multiple what? six figures or was 250 your highest year at that point? 250 was my highest year at that point. So in Tennessee, revenue was probably around 150, 175. And then moving here took a um, decrease. Probably increased your expenses too. Slightly. Okay. And 2021, so you had your big year in 250, in mm -hmm. 2020, 250. Yes. What about 2021? 2021 was a little bit higher. Um, I think we hit 300 that year. Congratulations. Thank you. And... 2022? 2022 was around 300 as well. And then... Last year? Yes. And then last year was 350, around 350. And here you are still getting mentorship and coaching. I am because yes. I don't feel it. Tell me what that Even means. Even telling you the revenue... Um, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't feel like I'm 
I guess like more money, more problems, more money, more expenses. Um, Mm -hmm. There are a lot of expenses with running a brick and mortar. So I feel like the more revenue you're bringing in, you're shelling out more money. Mm -hmm. So even telling you the numbers, I'm like, where did it go? You know, I know where it went, but I would like to feel it a little bit more. So I still need the coaching. Uh, Let me see something. Three, six, nine. In the last uh, one, two, three, four, five, you've generated in revenue a million dollars. Oh, look at me. <laughs> have you ever noticed? Have you ever, no. were you aware of that? No, I've never sat back and thought about that. No. Yeah. That's just in the last five years. It doesn't include whatever you've done since you started your business. Mm-hmm. So that's really huge. Uh, that's a really big deal. Yeah. That's a really big deal. But as a former brick and mortar business owner, I understand that that number uh, doesn't seem real to you because of all the overhead that you have with being a brick and mortar business owner. So yeah. now I want to move in to what your challenges are for both of you. And Asia, since we're here, let's go ahead and start talking uh, through your challenges. So okay. what challenges are we solving for today? Well, I mean, I think since I've been here, it's crazy that you're saying since the last five years, I feel like they've been the hardest five years. Okay. Um, business wise, I would say currently the challenges are I just want to increase our volume. So just marketing and better systems so that we can move from that like small mom and pop type field to like an actual business that's running efficiently mm-hmm. without me having to do everything. Those are the two things. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when we say, I, I just want you to elaborate on both of these. When we okay. say increase volume, mm-hmm. what specifically does that mean? So for instance, with the dance studio, our main hours of operation are maybe 4 to 9 p.m. And we do classes, but, and then we do have, I still do that uh, after school and the daycare programs as well during the day. Mm-hmm. But I would just like to increase the number of classes that we're doing and the number of children that we're reaching and adults, because we have adult classes too. But um, just making sure that those programs are as big as possible. So for instance, when I say not having to do everything, we do have the ability to go out into the community and do classes. I don't want to be doing all of them. So maybe increasing our volume with the number of classes we have and getting teachers properly trained Mm -hmm. so that they can go out and implement those classes on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you were to, how many students do you have right now? Adult and children, you may have a total number or a breakdown either way. Uh, I know with kids, we have uh, 150 right now, Mm -hmm. um, including our programs Mm -hmm. with adults. They do drop in classes. So it's a little bit harder to gauge. So it's like a choreographer will come and rent the space and then they'll host their own class. Yes. We do like a profit split. And they do a profit share. Is that 50, 50? Uh, yes. Okay. So then your customer in that instance is not necessarily the adult student. It's the choreographer. Correct. Yes. So do you we, have any curated uh, classes for adults? We do. We do. Um, we have a set weekly schedule. So it's the same choreographers every week, same class time. Um, they all are, you know, come to the studio and implement their class. But everything is held through Divine Dance Studio. So you register with us and then they get paid from us. Are they only getting paid or are is the only revenue that you're generating from those choreographers um, the profit share? Yes. Okay. And do you know about how much of your revenue comes from those classes uh, or that, that profit share specifically? What prof- portion of your revenue comes from that? About 100. It's so less than third, the kids' classes. Yes. About a third of your revenue. Mm-hmm. Okay, give me a second. They have a different system, so I'm able to differentiate between those numbers. Okay. Am I not connected to the internet anymore? Wait, help me. I don't know what's happening here. Give me one second. 
just doing a little research here. So I've never coached a dance studio before, but I have been in them. <laughs> I saw the video. You did well. I, you have moves, okay? <laughs> my moves were moving, okay, first of all. They were nice. My, my moves were insanely amazing. Um, I wasn't even talking about that, but yes, oh. shout out to me. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, you know, took dance growing up. Mm -hmm. My daughter was a, little, a dancer uh, growing up, and I have done some adult classes. I wasn't thinking about um, that experience. I do also have some friends who own, or a friend who owns a dance studio. Mm -hmm. So I have your challenges covered. I just wanted to do some quick um, research on some, some stats here. Okay, so about one third of the revenue comes from the adult program. How many dance instructors do you have? 16. For the adult program, too? No, that's combined adult and kids. Some of the teachers do both. How many instructors do you have that serve the adult portion? Probably around 10 or 12. Hey, hey, are you a service-based entrepreneur that helps your clients or customers get some type of a result, but you're struggling to post and communicate your message on social media? You don't know how to type a caption that connects and gets people's attention and converts them from just someone who's following you on social to becoming your customer or your client? Great news is that's my superpower. So I'm sending you three text messages every single day, excluding major holidays, directly to your phone of exactly what you need to post to get people to buy and convert them into clients and customers. All you have to do is join my program, Post to Paid, and you can do so by texting the words Post to Paid to 404-737-2767. And the best news is just $37 a month. So hurry up, send me the text. I'm looking for it now. And do you know on average how much um, your your instructors earn? They all vary very okay. vastly. So some of them get a weekly check of three fifty. Some of them get a check of twenty. Some of them get a check of. $100. Are we talking twenty dollars, a hundred dollars, three hundred and fifty dollars? Mm -hmm. Why on earth would I want to work for you? <laughs> well, I mean, it's also how much they're marketing their class to. So it's a direct profit split. Okay. So we market it and they market it. So how are you currently marketing the classes? Social media mainly. Okay. And do you mean posting on social media? Posting on social media. We do ads and um, ads on Facebook, ads on Instagram, and then we do Google ads as well. How are your ads performing? The ads are performing pretty well. We actually just started doing ads for our adult program. Mm -hmm. So we were only doing kids' classes for ads at first, mm -hmm. and they were doing so well. And I was like, I don't know why I wasn't doing adult program ads. Uh, is your ad account under Divine Dance Studio? Yes. Let's see. Do you know what your return on your ad spend is? No, I do not know what the direct return is. I just know when we implement our ads, we get a lot more traction on inquiries and people asking. So you're not tracking your conversions. No. How much are you spending in ads? About two fifty a month. Two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. That's why you're not tracking your conversions. You're not spending enough money. Okay. <laughs> not for a business that is typically doing three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I just heard the statistic that you should be spending five to ten percent of revenue on ads. And I was like, Ooh. um, I don't know if that's true that's a lot. <laughs> more. I mean, it's possible. I don't know if I'd have to sit down and really do the math and calculations to determine if that's ultimately what, what we end up doing. Um, but it's more about creating an operational budget and determining what your marketing budget is and then investing a percentage of that into your ad spend. Um, it's based on a lot. So it looks like you only have one ad running right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me take a look at this ad. It's, I think, for our kids' class ad. But for we, sure. Mm -hmm. um, but we just closed that program for the semester. so And I, the ad's still running? We, we need to shut. We shut down most of them, but I know which one is still running. But we just closed that program this Who's week. Who's running your ads? Me. Girl. Yes. 
I said this wasn't going to be the hot seat. I know. I told you I was <laughs> nervous already. Okay. But so yeah, I do run all of the ads. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're running the ads. Mm-hmm. You're investing in the ad spin, but you're not going back to look at the reports to see how the ads are performing. Correct. Well, I go back to see like our number of clicks and conversions, but not directly how many of those conversions lead to clients. So All like right. tracking how it implements with our program, mm-hmm. like our CRM program. Okay. We're going to come back to solving okay. the problem. I'm getting clear on what the problems are. Okay. Okay. So another and another thing. Hold on one second. Let me just write this down. Okay. We got uh, currently running untracked. Ads. Okay. Because that's a problem that you have that you didn't know you were having. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. The second thing that you communicated was um, better systems. Mm-hmm. What does that mean to you? Just better systems for things to be operating without me having to have my hands in everything. So whether that be the ads, whether that be just like weekly tasks, daily tasks, things like that. So when you're saying systems, you're not speaking necessarily of technology. You're speaking more so in like SOP, operating procedures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have good technology in place, good systems? I do feel like we have good technology in place, but with the brick and mortar, I feel like there's so many just hands-on activities that need to be done. So I would say that was more of the issue than the actual like technology systems. Mm -hmm. Are you essentially looking for more of your time back, less overwhelm? There, yes, there's a lot of overwhelm. I feel like there's a lot of moving pieces too. Julia. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's get into it. So when we're thinking about your challenges right now, Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about it. Okay. What are your current challenges in your business? Um, I would say client acquisition, um, probably marketing, and then messaging. I'm not sure if it's marketing, but client acquisition, I would say perhaps messaging and then systems. What do you mean by systems? Well, the way my funnels are, what well, the funnels are non-existent. So I should say that when I say systems, I think we have to run on a system like we need something to automate it because right now everything has my hands on it so literally I am in even AI we have AI dropping the LinkedIn content but it's me going in to say to tweak it to edit it Mm -hmm. to send it Mm -hmm. it's me going in creating the content for Instagram to tweak it, to edit it, to send it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with every platform, TikTok. And it could be a me thing too, because I'm like, okay, I didn't like that video. I don't want to upload this entire thing to YouTube. I think it should be shorter. If we're short, I think we should change the title. So it's just. You're an overthinker. (laughs) Is that a question? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) Yes, of course. I'm a Pisces. I'm always in my head. (laughs) Okay. Um, All right. Let's get into these problems. Okay. A couple of things. Um, Real quick, Joya, we're going to start with you. Okay. All right. Music business consultant, the Friendship Society. You have been in business for the last two years. Um, We've not yet cracked 100 grand, Mm -mm. but you've generated revenue in the business. Correct. This is your uh, year that you desire to make your very first six figures. Yes. 
and um, you're struggling with client acquisition. Yes. Marketing, which is client acquisition, like marketing and closing. Yep. Um, messaging and the fact that you don't have any funnels. Can we go to your Instagram page real quick? Sure. Okay, what is it? The Friendship Society. This person looks nothing like you. Really? No. <laughs> no. Okay. So RIAA, is that some kind of certification or accolade? Yeah, that's just um, that's just telling uh, the, the average person that comes on is telling you that I have my plaques, that I have, you know, my awards. I'm a mm -hmm. billboard charting songwriter. I've done a little bit. In the music, I'm a Grammy um, Recording Academy member. I'm a Grammy mentor. Okay. All of those things matter, but I know it's kind of like, who asked you what? Um, These things matter, but I don't know if I love the placement of it. Okay. Um, So we're talking about client acquisition. acquisition. When you are doing marketing, is it, it you said it was word of mouth. Yeah. So I'm assuming that it. people are recommending you and then maybe those people who were referred to you are coming to your social media to check you out, dig around. All right. So that said. And 90 percent of clients are coming from the gram. 90 percent of your clients come from Instagram. Yep. Okay, so the fact that we made less than 20 grand last last year means that hardly anybody, but of the hardly anybody's, 90% of them are coming from Instagram. Yes? Sometimes we have to be really, really, really real about what's happening. Yep. Um, because I'm surprised that they're coming from Instagram. Really? For sure. Okay. For sure. When I am looking at your Instagram page, yeah, I see nothing that says that I help entrepreneur or help music artist with publishing education, mm -hmm. intellectual property ownership, or coding and encrypting their music in the proper file format. Okay. I don't see any of that. And I'm a little disappointed because you just told me that you just really got clear on your messaging. I did. Mm -mm. Okay. So the messaging on Instagram says that I am a coach in the music business. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you clear, Asia? Coach in the music business. If you go to the Instagram page and it says, I know this is your girl. I know y'all been talking. Okay. And I know that you don't want to tag okay. team me. Right? Tag team me back. And it's just like, are you going to include me in this? I was no. waiting for my turn. I mean, I would think like a singing coach. Coach, music business, right? Got um, it. I would think, la, 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 la. Right. Right. Something understand. along those lines. Um, or something in the music business, but I don't know. And that's Got the it. problem. Okay. okay? Um, there are a lot of accolades um, here. It says that you're a Grammy mentor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Grammy you. Okay. That could be okay. Do you make money from that? No. All that's right. Strictly. So while it's okay, it shouldn't be first in your bio. Got it. I know it's an accolade. It sounds good, but there's another position for it. Okay. If you have room um, in your bio. Okay. Um, also here it says, I teach artists how to create money flow, cash flow from licensing, touring, and tech. Correct. Okay. That's closer. But it's. But not enough. Got it. Um, because here's the thing. We're talking about. Here, we're probably talking about new artists, independent artists. Mm -hmm. They don't understand how licensing applies to them. They need to be educated about that. Okay. So when we talk about publishing education and when we talk about um, proper file formats, and th right. that resonates. Like okay. an artist understands that they do some kind of publishing. They don't know how much publishing and how to, how to communicate that, but they understand publishing maybe more than licensing or sure. understanding that they're licensing to platforms. Sure. Um, touring and tech, I saw nothing here about touring, but you then said that the inner workings of your program, kind of like the up level, the upsell is now that we've got this clear, I can teach you how to make some money, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. It doesn't belong yet. 
if I have to have gone through your program to understand that. Okay. Okay. So that's something that I find out maybe inside the program okay. or something that's on the website. Like we all also work with artists in this capacity, but we require them to go through this program first. Okay. I understood. Um, tech. Yeah. I mean, how to properly upload the file form and choose the right file format. Mm -hmm. Is that tech? Yes. Mm -hmm. As a rapper who just went viral <laughs> yesterday, do I understand that I need tech in my business? I understand. Okay. Yeah. So I believe sometimes we attempt to over articulate okay. what it is that we do when really I help art. I teach artists publishing education. Okay. I teach artists how to maintain ownership of their intellectual property. Mm -hmm. And I teach uh, artists about file formatting for uh, ownership, yep. whatever that looks like. Right. Okay. Okay. Or I teach artists how to license their work to uh, streaming platforms instead of giving it away. Yes. Because most of them truthfully are giving their work away on yep. these streaming platforms. Okay. Yep. We're clear there. Yes. One thing that I don't see happening. <laughs> there are no notes I'm being ready. taken here. I, I didn't know we could. I didn't either. Like I got you my thought computer. you were coming to coaching and you couldn't take the information with you. I have a whole computer in my bag over there. <laughs> can you use my phone. Yeah, you can use your phone. You can get your computer. Is that your bag all the way over there? Yes, but no, I'm I'm mentally recording it. Trust me. Do you know that a short pencil is more valuable than a short memory? <laughs> <laughs> that's facts <laughs> that is absolutely facts grab your computer real quick okay i can do it, it. yes okay you think i'm doing this for nothing <laughs> we're going to get this information down in real time and that's crazy because when we went to the smoothie shop you told us that you're always recording always recording always record. the beautiful thing is that this episode will drop and you'll have this to refer back to but this episode won't drop for a couple of weeks. Okay. So that said, you want to wait a couple of weeks to get this information? No, not at all. Tammy, you over there taking notes on whatever <laughs> I say over here? Like, what are we doing, <laughs> ladies? Okay. So the whole bio needs a facelift. Okay. Okay. And, and I gave you everything there that you need. Okay. All right. I usually, if I'm with a client in person, um, we don't video record the whole session. It's just a whole lot. So I do usually tell my clients on VIP days and stuff to put the voice recorder on. This is your information. Okay. okay. You guys didn't pay to be here, but I did invite you for this opportunity. So this is your information to build your business. Okay. All right. So the DM, the, the bio needs a facelift. Now I am looking at the actual content. And while you are stunning and you're always fly, <laughs> why a selfie picture of you is, is pinned, pinned to the top of your page. To the top. <laughs> Asia. I'm not the bad cop. Asia. I don't, you don't even have to be a, a bad cop to identify the flaw in this lack of strategy. Is here. it a flaw? Tell me. What? What? You uh, come on, Donnie. Now you got to bring that one home because I you didn't even read the copy. And neither will anybody else <laughs> come into your page for artists <laughs> publishing education. They're not reading this. Is that a personal page or the business? No, like, this is, is that... the Friendship Society. <gasps> oh, was, was that asking. shady? No, no, it wasn't shade. <laughs> oh, my God. Please have mercy on me when it's my turn. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> but is it? <laughs> Okay, I will unpin that. Okay, so now... I like that picture. I'm sure you do mm -hmm. like it very much. You know what? What I'd like for you to do, this picture from five months ago that you like so much, share it on your stories today. I will. Let everybody know that you love this picture and, and unpin take it. it. I will. For sure. Yeah. You don't have to take it down. If you unpin it, it's going to go down in your timeline. Okay, I'm going to unpin it. All right, cute. You do be fly, though. Thank you, All right. Donnie. I like what you did with the hat and the sneakers. You like that? But I don't care. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Doesn't> matter. <laughs> All right. So He's now we're moving on um, to the content. Okay. 
Okay. So the content is I, and I say that for that way on purpose. Okay. It's not all right. It's not okay. It's not great. It's I. Really? And I say that. Yes. Yes. My God. Really? I say that because. Oh, um, my God. This needs to be more education specific to what you do. So one of your pinned posts. Okay is three lenders you should know that mm-hmm. offer musicians loans. Yeah. Okay, your business consults in the areas of... Your business consults in the areas of publishing education, mm-hmm. intellectual property ownership, how to code and encrypt music. Right. Your pinned post, though it's great information, does not align with these three core pillars that you consult from. Okay. Okay. So while this is great information that someone in the music industry absolutely needs, yeah, this is like a one-off resource. Your yeah. pinned posts are reserved to really show the billboard of what you do. Everything Got from it. the top of your page, your name, and the first six to nine posts that I can see on your page. Okay. This is your commercial. This is your billboard. When okay. people land here, I need, because when somebody says, oh yeah, this is what Joya does. I'm going to come to your page and I'm going to look and I'm going to say, oh, I don't see anything about that on her page. Okay. It says she does something in music, but nothing that she said she did in music or that you told me she did in music. Got so it. I need you to give this page a complete facelift here. Okay. Your, whenever you're posting on social, every single line in this grid needs to have something directly related. Got okay. It. Got it. You have the three top music sync opportunities. Mm -hmm. I am guessing that this is relevant. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Because I see sync licensing, Mm -hmm. sync licensing, um, five top business loans for women. I just posted that. This is not your mission. Right. Okay. Okay. This is not your mission. Now inside of your community, if you want to share, Hey, you guys, I've got these resources. Yes. But your page is your page to promote what? The business. The business. Yeah, the Friendship Society. Five top business loans for women. Do you, first of all, are you a lending expert? (laughs) No, not at all. This is not your mission. Um, This one is for my thinkers. I want you to take out a sheet of paper, Mm -hmm. write down your desires. You don't like that one either? For sure not. All right, so your page is a cluster cluck (laughs) of personal development. Okay. Unrelated business information. Yes. What this looks like, what this looks like to me is you're struggling for content. You don't really know what to post. Okay, I would like to, in my defense. Okay. Okay. And I do hear you. I'm receiving all of this information. Mm-hmm. But I want to add one thing. I do have a young audience that follows me. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, I want to give them resources that's going to help them to get the to get ready mentally. Because it's a tough game. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That may not be my my place, right? Maybe I shouldn't give that information out either. But I find that the reason why, and this is going off topic, but I promise I'll bring it back around. Like the reason why a lot of people turn to drugs and substance abuse and all of that, especially inside of the music community, is because they don't have like footing. So I find like, seriously, I'm listening. I've been a troubled soul, a tortured soul myself. So I'm just one prayer away from not going down that road but a lot of I I think a lot of what can you know reeled me back around was like having advice it's the reason why I came to you Mm -hmm. because you were speaking that language Mm -hmm. had you not been talking about Bob Proctor and Tony Robbins Mm -hmm. I don't think I would have lasted that long Mm mm-hmm but when I got to you, I was like, oh, my God, it's somebody that speaks my language. So that's mm-hmm. why you see those kinds of posts there. Okay. But I don't see a post here that says any of that. That post you just went into. It's not it. 
(laughs) (laughs) Not for your young demographic. These posts are for a well-developed mindset. Okay. Okay. This is for a grown, grown person. Got it. You got them visualizing way back when they're, they're right now. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. They don't have a way back when to visualize just yet. So while I admire and applaud the mission, okay, there's a different, more effective way for both your business and your passion okay. to do that. Okay? okay. But here's what I can promise you. Okay. Especially if you have a young audience. And when we say young, what age group? Um, 25. 25. Well, that's my insights tell me that. 25, I think somewhere around late 20s. That's young in my eyes. So your your insights on Instagram are not only telling you 25, because I know your insights look like mine, mm-hmm. and it gives you a range. Yeah. So it may be 18 to 25, oh, 20 to 30. 25 to 55. 25 to 55. Age range. Yep. But the age range for your your ideal customer is what? Or client is what? 35 to 45. For my ideal customer that's ready Mm -hmm. to pay. Mm -hmm. No. The 45-year-old rapper? Well, no, because you have to remember everybody that's coming through my door isn't a recording artist. Some of them are managers. Some of them are representing artists some of them are moms Mm -hmm. some so who are you educating the most is it going to be like what lane are we growing do you have right now Mm -hmm. what you have is it programs geared toward the individual artist and they benefit most or Mm -hmm. is it programs geared toward the people who are on staff of these artists got it so the programs geared toward individual artists, it would be the same program for the manager that's representing mm-hmm. the individual artists. So the program essentially is for indie artists. Okay. Because no matter where they end up, they have to start from an independent. For sure. You know, starting gate. Mm-hmm. But, um, and it, it would be the same program for the nonprofit that I was telling you about. Because the same thing that I tell them for their um, boys group, I'm going to tell the dad for his son that's a producer. Right, but who are you targeting? And that's what's going to matter here, okay. right? Especially if you also have this passion of serving the young community. Who's cutting the check to you? Is it the individual independent artist or is it their manager or their momager or their dadager? Got it. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it would be the manager or the mom or the business, the small business or the small indie label. Do you find that most of your indie artists um, have representation in terms of management? Most of them, no. Okay. So it's a couple of problems that I'm identifying here. Okay. And it explains where we are with revenue. Okay. And until we close these gaps and get this clarity, we're not going to really be able to make that 100000 this year because you're not calling out to your audience. Okay. okay. So I get your intent. Right now what this is is you serving everybody who needs this help. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And in doing so, and, and there is a way to do that, but in doing it the way you're doing it, the people who need your help can't look at this stuff and tell that they need your help. <laughs> okay. They can't tell that you have something that they need. So what I really want you to do is um, on your social media, we talked about the bio. Okay. Right. And instead of this, I teach artists how to create cash flow from licensing, touring tech and all that. That's first of all, what you do needs to be your top line before billboard, before award winning songwriter. You can put that right under it, Okay. but needs to be your top line. This line here that you have next to your name, Mm -hmm. um, needs to be more in alignment, not music business coach. Okay. Um, what I am seeing from you is that this is like new generation um, artist business development. Okay. okay. And I would focus probably more on that because it's a familiar term in your industry than the word coach. Yeah. 
Because when you think in coaching, you're thinking like vocal coaching, dance coach, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and get that changed on your bio. Okay. Um, let's move with artist business development. Do you feel like that's in, in alignment with what you actually do? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead to Instagram. You don't have to pause. Okay. You can keep going. Oh, I can't? Okay. Yeah. Just swipe up and over. Or do you need time? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm okay. with it. All right. So that line changes to artist business development. Okay. If you can't fit all of development, abbreviate it. Okay, but that's very, very. Or you can actually um, abbreviate abbreviate business, artist business development. Okay. Okay. And. Change it. Okay. I don't know why it's not letting me change. You need some help? Artist business development. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just slow. We're on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Okay, open up the notes on your phone. I got it. You got it? Yes. All right. Artist, Artist business, business development. development. Mm -hmm. Yep, I got it. And then we're going to get rid of this I teach line, that whole line. Okay. I teach to tech. Get rid of all of that. Got it. And uh, this is just a loose line from you to go with right now. Okay. We can work with it. You can come into Actionable CEO and we can refine it. Okay. Um, but it's going to be something more like I help. Mm -hmm. I help. Music artists. Yep. Understand their publishing, mm -hmm. intellectual property, mm -hmm. and ownership. Got it. Did all that fit? It will. I'll make it fit. Okay. So that is, <laughs> that is what you call your message statement. Oh, what do I do? I work with independent artists to help them understand their publishing, their intellectual property, and ownership uh, through licensing. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. I like it. Is that clear? Thank you, Donnie. It is crystal clear. <laughs> Are you sure? Of course. Okay. Absolutely. Asia, when you hear that, does it sound like you understand what she does? Definitely. Okay. So we have that there. The next thing I want to ask you about, you have this line in here that says DM me to book to get started today. What does yes. that mean? What does, so if I DM you book, hold on, let me just do it real quick. Okay. I am going to DM you the word book. Hi, thanks for reaching out. Is this mini chat? Yes. Okay. Uh, we are excited. You are interested in our coaching and content to be added to our list your cell contact below. If you're ready to move forward, see the next prompt. This is the mo the most unengaging DM. Oh I my could god! Receive. Okay, so a couple <laughs> of things. Okay, um, your audience is young. Yeah. Do you think young people are replying to that? First of all, I'm not giving you my cell phone number in the DMs. Okay, that's kind of the start with. Some of them may, yeah. but I would prefer something different. It says, if I'm ready to move forward, see the next prompt, how long do you want me to sit here and wait for the next prompt? Well, usually, so I do pretty well on that. Um, how long do you want me to wait for the next prompt? Did you put your cell in? So I have to see, put Correct. my cell in. Okay. Yes. So. <clears throat> Joya, I love you. But what you're not going to tell you me is that you do pretty well on this when our revenue was what our revenue was for the whole year last okay. year. Okay. 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 You're having some luck on this, but we're not okay. doing pretty well on this. Okay. So okay. we just want to be strategic. You're, Absolutely. You're investing in this in this automation system. First of all, I'm impressed that you're using that. Okay. Absolutely. Good job. Okay. But uh, we got to do better than this. Okay. So. Um, book wouldn't necessarily be the code word, the keyword that I use for you. Okay. Um, because it's like DM me book to get started today. Yeah. I would do something more in alignment with the help that you're giving. Okay. okay. So you're helping them again with, uh, artists with, uh, publishing education, mm -hmm. intellectual property ownership, 
all of this is dealing with ownership, right? Yep. Or it could be, um, and it's, I help artists. So I would say something like DM me artist to get more information. To get more info. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because your process, do they have to book a call with you first? Yes. Okay. DM me artist for more information. Okay. Okay. Got it. Or DM me artist to understand how I can help you. Okay. That's better. Like that. Okay. DM me artist to understand how I can help you. Then when we go into these DMs, um, hi, thanks for reaching out. It needs to sound like your voice. We are excited. You are interested in our content and coaching. <laughs> hey, thanks. Okay, got it. More of me and less of. For sure, more of you. Yeah. If your phone rang yeah. and your girl was calling, how do you answer your phone? Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay. Now, hi. No. Hi. Okay. So is. Hey, um, and I would I would probably automate this a little differently. Okay. I would say, hey, um, hey, thanks for reaching out. That part's fine. Mm -hmm. um, are you an artist or are you an artist representative? Because uh. it could be a manager, a mom, whatever, right? Are you an artist or do you, are you an artist representative? Love that. Then whenever they pick what they pick, they're probably going to go to the same automation to schedule the same kind of call. But, you know, your data is going to be able to tell you if your audience is truly the artist okay. or truly the artist representative. Got okay? it. Got it. And then it needs to take them not to be added to our list. It needs to be to schedule your call, to schedule a call. I'd love to invite you to schedule a call with me, not okay. to do da, da 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 Remember in the DMs, the whole point of it is to sound personalized. Okay. Okay. So, oh, you're the artist. Okay. So if they click artist, you can set it up in mini chat that says, okay, artist. Okay. I'd love to help make sure you're making as much money as you can in this industry. Uh, most artists don't understand their, their publishing and most artists don't understand that platforms like Spotify blah, 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 should be paying them for all those downloads and streams. Yeah. You give them something in that message to make them say, oh, shoot, I didn't know that. How do you do that? Um, let's hop on a call. Let's hop on a call real quick to see how I can help you. Okay. And then it goes to your link to schedule. Got it. Okay. Okay. That's where it goes. Okay. Not put me on a list. Yada, yada, <laughs> yada, yada, yada. And then if it's um, an artist representative, it's like, Okay, great. We I work with people all the time who represent artists in different capacities. Okay. Um, I would love to help I would love to help partner with you to make sure that your artist understands his publishing rights and is getting paid from all the streams that we know he or she is about to get. Got it. Let's hop on a quick call to see how I can help with you help you and your artist. It's you and the artist. You and your artist. Okay. Yeah. Then they get what? The scheduling link. Yeah. Okay. So that solves that problem. So that's going to take care of a lot of one marketing strategy, but two okay. client acquisition. And we're only in the bio. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I got <laughs> Reese, don't <laughs> laugh at me. <laughs> What's this rock star revenue round table? So um, that's just a, my community that I have like to get broadcast them. channel. Yeah. Um, offering up like, um, resources on sync community or sync opportunities things like that you know what uh, this should be a community of no artists who have voluntarily tapped into you okay joya everything is about the friendship society everything okay, okay? everything and I would even make the friendship society make more sense and say, I'm your friend in this, you know, industry. I'm, I'm this friend in this dog eat dog industry. Okay. I'm your friend in this cutthroat industry. I help artists understand their publishing ownership and intellectual property. Okay. Make that the main, you going to keep making 20 grand if we're not clear here and word of mouth just is not enough. Right. It's just not enough. And even with word of mouth, even if you had enough people referring you, what you sent, what we're sending them to has to make sense. Okay. Okay. It has to make sense. So there is that there, there just can't be, you're going to have to choose. Okay. There can't be 
the friend group where we're just, you know, loving on each other. <laughs> At least not on this page. Okay. This page is for artist business development. Got so it. So any offers, any broadcast groups, any communities that you're building, artist business development. Okay. Artist business development. development. Okay. So yeah. that has to change immediately. Okay. Okay. Let me look at these other links. Goodbye, best friends. <laughs> Goodbye, Friendship Friday. Okay. Unless you're just trying to be on here being big sis to everybody. Okay, so I have a question. I have an answer for sure. How, tell me if I'm wrong. How can I give back then? Like, because I do really want to. You know how you can give back? I really want to help them. You know how you can give back? Get the business tight. You can make you some money. Okay. And get yourself in position to make all kinds of decisions to give back. Period. And I'm also not telling you not to div- not to give free information. You okay. are giving back. I'm telling you to restructure this Rockstar Revenue Roundtable to okay. one that serves your business. Got it. So you're still in there and you're still giving them in that roundtable, in that broadcast. That's the perfect place to give them free access to information like top lenders and top five business loans for women. That's the perfect place to do that. Got it. But on this page, this is your marketing billboard okay. for your business. And it's all about growing your business. And when it comes to helping, you can't help anybody until you put your life vest on first. Right. And we are drowning. Right. With a $20,000 revenue. Right. Yep. Okay. Facts. I need you to not just float. I yeah. need you swimming. I'd like to do a breath stroke. A, a good one. You hear me? <laughs> All right? Because we're not even doggy paddling yet. You you have yeah. an anchor tied to your ankles. Yeah. And you're at the bottom of the pool. And, like, I, I'm not convinced yet that you're picking up on what I'm putting down. Like, I'm not convinced that you understand the urgency about how all of this stuff has to stop abruptly. Mm-hmm. And you give when you are in a position to. No, I receive it. Like, I'm getting it. It's permeating. Okay. For sure. I take everything you say. Look, if it wasn't for me listening to you and applying it, I wouldn't have even made that. Well, I don't feel like when I say you're picking it up, I feel like you're going to do it, but it's still some reluctancy there. Like, you're still thinking, like, with your heart. And I admire that. Because I am a person who thinks with my heart. But, you know, when I was leading with that in the beginning and was really confused, I didn't make any money. Correct. Now that I am in position and I generate the revenue that I generate, I can help people with ease. Yeah. There's all kinds of things that I can do now with ease. Right. Out of purpose or passion driven uh, efforts because I'm straight first. Correct. And unfortunately, that's what that's just what we have to do. You got to okay. be able to pay your bills, survive. You want to leave your job. Let's get the main thing, the main thing. Okay. And if right now you want to give some free information, you have to find a way to do it okay. in a way that doesn't conflict. Because what happens is everybody, Asia, you too, when we start just becoming known for all this free, 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 free resource, mm-hmm. nobody wants to pay you. Got it. Nobody wants to pay you. And when we're given, when we create this, um, this reputation of being this resource for this thing, right. then you're bringing on more people who just want free stuff from you. Right. So the community that you're building, the broadcast channel, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do it. Do that extra stuff in there. Okay. But this page is for what? The Friendship Society for Business. Artist development. Artist. Business development. For sure. Yeah. Because it can't be artist development. Why? Because I'm not an A&R. <laughs> not an a and But you are helping artists yes. to develop their business acumen. Yep. You start there. All right? Okay. okay so your, your action steps are everything that I just told you. Getting yep. that bio changed, making those links, change that automation. Yep. Let's start there. Your content, so we're clear, 1,000% on artist business development. Before you post anything, I want you to say, Is this artist business development in my three core pillars of uh, publishing education, intellectual property ownership, and licensing? Okay. Does it fit into these three core pillars? If not, save it somewhere, but it doesn't go here. 
Got it. Okay. Okay. And then once you get that going, uh, in about two weeks, I want you to update me in Actionable CEO to tell okay. me how you're feeling about the flow of your content, how your results from your automations are improving, and if those really good results that you're getting actually are starting to look like some really good results. Okay. Is that fair? And so fair. then once we go from that, then we'll get the next step because it's going to be a ladder the process, right? It, it's, yeah. a, it's a ladder. Once we get this in place, let's play around with that. Okay. There's so much more that has to happen. I cannot give you everything of course. in this setting. Yeah. But I believe that if you start there, um, that's going to be a good place. The other thing that I didn't notice is an actual website. I think you told me that. Mm -hmm. um, right now, let's keep it simple. Uh, it's not necessarily that you have to have a whole complicated funnel. I just want you to get a landing page. Mm -hmm. Go on Fiverr. Hire someone who's proficient in landing pages. Mm -hmm. What funnel uh, platform do you use? I think you said you had something. Um, I did have Active. Active um, Campaign? Yeah. It, and um, the website is up, but I just had somebody look at it, and they were, like, um, thinking that I should do, like, a complete restructuring of the site. So okay. I guess that has to happen. But hmm. it's up. There's a sales page. There's a... I paid someone to look at it and okay. give me an audit. Okay. And then she gave me all of the suggestions on what I should do. Mm -hmm. So I did a complete overhaul, but I, mm -hmm. someone looked at it again, maybe about a week ago mm -hmm. and they were like, yeah, it's, it's okay. So you paid but, somebody that strategist gave you information and yeah. then somebody else looked at it and said, that's not good. Correct. What's your website? Uh, the friendship society.com. Okay, yeah. So I'm not sure what feedback the first person gave you, mm -hmm. but the second person was correct. Yeah. All right. So we're not going to show this to anybody right now. Okay. Um, right now, your call to action is to book a call with you. Okay. okay. Don't, let's not show this to anybody. We actually need to dive into this website, mm -hmm. but there's so many adjustments that need to be made that we don't have time to do it in this episode. Okay. Um. But we can probably talk about a couple of things in our next actionable CEO call. Okay. Let's bring this up. We'll share a screen and we'll kind of go through that. Start with the first things first, take everybody to schedule a call. Okay. Okay. I'd love to hear how I can, I'd love to tell you how I can help you. I'd love to tell you how you can make more money from these platforms. All right. Okay. I, blah, 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 blah. I'd love to partner with you and your art, your artist. Let's start there. Get those changes made Got next it. week in our actionable CEO call. Let's pick up. Um, but we're only going to pick up if everything that we've already put in place or suggested is in place. Okay. Good job, Joy. I can do that. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. Taking the feedback. Okay. Absolutely. I am going to get with Asia. Thank you, Donnie. You're welcome, Joya. All right. Asia. All right, so your challenges in your business is right now to increase your volume, increase the number of classes um, you want to, you serve adults and children. Yes. Um, so primarily it's to increase your volume. Second thing is uh, your, your, your marketing strategy and then better systems. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what are you doing right now to other than running ads when people, when someone walks into the door and they're considering uh, enrolling in your dance studio, tell me about that process. So we have an enroll an enrollment process where we encourage them to sign up for a trial class first. Mm -hmm. And then once they do the trial class, if they enroll that day, then they get a discount on their registration fees. Um, if they don't, then we have a follow-up process where we'll call them and ask them, is there any questions? Um, would you like to try another class? Did you, you know, want to go ahead and get signed up? Mm -hmm. And just encourage them to sign up that way. And then we'll do a follow-up email as well. Just one follow-up email? No, we have a chain of um, three follow-up emails. Mm -hmm. But most people register or let us know why they aren't going to register before that three hits. 
So we want to increase the volume. Let me come over here. And those are set up through MailChimp. All right. So if I come in in the door or online, am I offered a free trial? Yes. Okay. And what percentage of people uh, who come in the door who are offered a free trial actually take it? Um, take the trial or sign up for class? Take the trial. Um, well, everyone is offered a free trial, so we just advertise free trials. Do you mean like... So do you have a lot of walk-ins inquiring about the business? No, no okay. most of it is online. Most of it is online. Mm -hmm. So so is the free trial... Let me look at your ad real quick. Okay. Um, so if you sign up for our account, like a parent account, mm -hmm. then we automatically call you and ask if you want to do a trial class. And most My phone. People do. Mm -hmm. That's okay. our first step. And if we sign up for a parent account... Yes. What does that mean? Um, it's our CRM platform. It's called like Dance Studio Pro, mm -hmm. where we have all of our information. Essentially, if you sign up for an account but don't register for a class right away, mm -hmm. then we call you and ask, oh, did you have any questions? Did you want to sign up for a free trial class? But some people just go ahead and register for class. I'm trying to access this ad. Your ad, we know safety is a huge concern right now, so we are currently offering our classes in person and virtually this season to meet your comfort level. Okay, so this is a super old ad. It has an, it has an August date on it, and we are in March of the next year. Yeah. Our season started in August, but yes, it is older. Older? Mm-hmm. Old. <laughs> We're seven months later, babe. We're yeah. almost in. We're almost a year in on this expiration. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but even still, and this same ad has been running since August 2020. Yes. Do you rerun this ad every year in August? We just rerun. We keep it running, just because we're still doing an online virtual option. You've been running this ad since August 2020. Yeah. Tell me more. That is our only ad that's still running from August 2020. We do new ads weekly, but we just finished our other ad because we just closed for like enrollment for this season. Okay. So when we're talking about new customer acquisition, mm -hmm. this is problem number one. Your primary marketing channel is expired and outdated. Okay. We're done. I mean, <laughs> that's that's probably more than 80% of your problem. Mm -hmm. Your number one marketing opportunity is expired and outdated, okay? So this is not helping you at all. When okay. I'm looking at this ad and I see that this is an ad from August 2020, and also in the ad it mentions the month of August, mm -hmm. I am thinking this is an unorganized business mm -hmm. who doesn't even check their marketing. They're, they're like, so if the administration is this unorganized in a paragraph, what could the experience be in studio? Yeah. This is saying so, this is so telling. Okay. And parents are always looking for a way to judge the adults that they are putting their kids in front of. Yes. Okay. All right. And on that mat, on the ad, as cute as she is, we got a little girl wearing a mask. Yeah. Hey, hey, CEO Donnie Wiggins here, and I am so excited to announce my new mentorship group is dropping. You may have already heard about it, but I wanted to, I wanted you to hear it from the horse's mouth directly from me. My new mentorship group, Actionable CEO, for entrepreneurs who are interested in professional growth, personal growth, and financial growth. You want to learn from me. Y'all have been asking for this for the last three years, and I have finally brought Actionable CEO back to serve you. Every single week, direct mentorship from me. You will also hear from other people who are in my community that I believe will be greatly impactful to you. You're going to get behind the scenes. We're going to be spending some time together live. This is not pre-recorded. This is live mentorship. So if you are an entrepreneur and you want to be connected, feel connected, you want to elevate your brand, you want to elevate your life, you want to elevate your level of success, Actionable CEO is for you. ActionableCEO.com. See you there. Asia, your seat about to get hot. 
All, All right, good. let's get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, this is just all bad. So here's what I want. This is just really all bad because there's nothing about this that's relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, let me click the link and just see what we got going on here. So cute. Okay. Um, the link is also not telling of who your actual client base is. So it's taking me to the divine dance studio.com page. But right now we have this, um, I don't like your logo. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I just don't, this definitely looks like yoga or professional stretching, not dance. Okay. Okay. Joya, just so you can see. Okay. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yoga yoga yeah. yeah it's definitely giving yoga okay um beyond that so i i would honestly if you were my client just right away a complete rebrand okay. i didn't love the imaging that you showed on the ad it wouldn't call out to me i am not getting um the feeling of experience, like it's, it's not saying we got 10 years in this game. Yeah. Um, and it's not saying that we overserve our members okay. or our students, uh, our students, students. So the first thing that I want to see you do is rebrand. Okay. Okay. Um, and just so like y'all see that this is what we talking about is, it's giving yoga. Okay. All right. Um, color scheme and all of that is fine. It's unisex, so you can keep that, but let's do something different. Now, when we go down to um, Divine Dance Studio offers dance classes in Marietta, Georgia, um, the pictures that you have are all of children except for this one woman who's under a news category. So these circles that are on your website, I like the placement of them there, but I would focus on maybe the three court three core categories of types of student that you serve. Okay. So you might have toddlers, you might have big kids, and then you might have adults. Okay. Right. Show, but actual um, students. So you want to get some of your parents to sign a waiver and say, Hey, we love to feature your kid on our, on our website. Can we do a photo, bring them in studio, do a photo shoot. And you have your actual dancers. You pick the strongest dancers um, and, and put them on here to help you market this business and, you know, obviously get the parents permission for that. And so before we get into news and all of that stuff, it needs to be about, we have classes for two to five year olds. We have classes for this age to this age. We also have adult classes. So now when we're talking about classes offered, they can click what classes are being offered for the babies, what classes are being offered for the big kids and what classes are being offered for the adults. Okay. Okay. For those three. Yeah, for the if that's okay. your primary groups. So okay. just pick what your three primary groups are and three because three is the magic winning number in marketing yeah. and you already have three here on this template. Um, so let's talk more about that. I would love, because you're a dance studio, I would love to see some type of a uh, video. Okay. Demonstrating dance. Okay. In all three categories. So I would probably put like a main video on this page that is, a marketing reel similar to an Instagram reel, but a marketing reel. And maybe you're showing, you know, a few seconds of the babies and showing a few seconds of the big kids and showing a few seconds of the adults. And when they click into each category, these need to be clickable. I want to click and see what you got going on for adults. Okay. Okay. So when I click on that, there's a video, another video specifically showing some of the dance instructor instructors from your best choreographer. Okay. Okay. You're specifically showing those things and it could be clips from a previous class or something like that. You'll do the same thing with the big kids. You'll do the same thing with the small kids. Okay. Okay. So your website is going to be more appealing. I would recommend that you put a location tab at the top of your website as well. So I don't have to read the content on your page to find out where you're located. Okay. Um, on your reviews. I love that you included the Facebook, like, I guess they're giving you these reviews from Facebook. So I love that that's happening. But what I would recommend is if you restructure this template and the reviews that you have, if you could get a picture of mom and her baby. Okay. And it's like this, or if we can even get video. So make it manual. Cause I think that's an automatic feed. 
Oh, is this on automatic feed? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, so I would have a place that's rolling automatic feed. Okay. But instead of these big uh, rectangles that you have uh-huh. in this space, I'd have a video, video, okay. video testimonial. But even under here, you can have the rolling automatic reviews that are coming in text format as well. Okay. But those videos are going to sell your business. Okay. You got to show me what y'all are working with. Okay? okay. I am honestly both shocked and thrilled that you made $300,000 doing this. Mm -hmm. These tweaks, you got a seven figure studio all day. Okay. With just these simple tweaks. Okay. Like I am baffled that you were able to pull this off. So I am thinking that a lot of your business must also be word of mouth. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also, I'm looking at our ad account and our ad that's active is different, but I'm not sure if it's like, our ad account got hacked in December. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if it's like the same one that you're seeing. Mm. Okay, that's an issue because all I did was Googled you and pulled you up then yeah. in the Facebook ads library. So then that means that I want you to get with an SEO specialist. Mm-hmm. You can go right to Fiverr if you don't already have one and you need okay. an SEO specialist. An SEO specialist is going to make sure that when people are Googling for dance studios, dance studios near me, dance studios mm-hmm. in Marietta, your correct profile of information comes okay. up. Okay. Um, the other thing is on your website, there really are no clickable links. So if I see something that I like, you want to be able to click on it. I want to be able to click on it. This whole website needs to be redone. Okay. I hate to tell you that. That's okay. But this is 100% unacceptable. Okay. Okay. Um, what I also love is that you are dis- displaying your prices, but I don't love the display of this class schedule. Okay. Yeah. It's that's really an automatic confusing feed too. Yeah. It's really confusing. And maybe if it's automatic feed, that's cool. But again, Changes. we need to separate it into age groups. Okay. Okay. If I'm, if I'm mom, I don't want to look through the three-year-old classes to find out what my 14 year old can do. Okay. Okay. And I'm also seeing mention of a father-daughter dance recital. I'm sure this is the big thing that you guys do every single year. Mm-hmm. Let's make some noise, some 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 commotion about this. Okay. Okay. Um, offering daycare is... Like daycare classes, uh, like when we go to the daycares. Understood. So I would be clear that these are off-site okay. daycare visits. Okay. Okay. Um. You actually need a VIP day very badly because there's so much wrong here Mm -hmm. that we're not going to fix it all in this session. Um, However, those are just some general things. We need the whole website. We need the whole branding package just redone. I'm curious to see what your team is wearing inside of the building. I know your dancers are probably in leotards and Mm -hmm. athleisure wear and stuff like that. But your general staff who's working in accepting new people, what do they look like? What are they wearing? Um, that's going to be really important. Okay. What is the um, uniform. the uniform, but also what's the feeling, what's the vibe okay. when we walk into this place, right? And it needs to, everything needs to feel like this is the dance studio okay. that I must be at, okay? Um, I would recommend that you also include a tab at the top of your page specifically for scheduling. Okay. And I want you to hear me loud and clear. No more pictures. Okay. Video. Video. You do dance. Yes, ma'am. Not modeling. Okay. Dance. Dance is movement. Yes. Yes. So let's get rid of these pictures and completely rebrand this whole website. Okay. All right. Okay. Hold on. Let me just look at this. Um, I had to double check and make sure I was right before I said that, um, faculty, you don't have faculty, you have staff or team members. Okay. Faculty is usually in an educational institute in the form of traditional education, not really dance. So it's like in your schools and universities. Okay. And I would say team members, it just feels uh, more cohesive to building a culture than okay. it does to say staff. Let me come back over here.
Okay, so client acquisition. First and foremost, a complete rebrand. Okay. Okay. The rebrand online needs to match the rebrand in on site. On site. Um, that's first and foremost. Okay. Number two, uh, and this takes care of client acquisition marketing. I want you to hire an ads team. Okay. This no longer needs to be something that you're doing. I think you did the very best that you can based on your understanding mm -hmm. of paid marketing at this time. Okay. But it's time for you to hire an ads team. Okay. And I have a couple that um, I can refer you offline. Okay. Um, I'll refer you a couple of ads teams to think about, well, I really only have one um, and we'll see. We have to first see if they have an av availability to take on new clients. Okay. I'm not sure, but you will not be spending $250 a month mm -hmm. in ads. It's just not enough to $350 a month is a testing budget. I think it's a sufficient testing budget and you can produce a return. Okay. Um, I would recommend something like that for my newer clientele who hadn't yet made six figures or my clients who are terrified of investing money and you just kind of get got to get your feet wet, mm -hmm. right? That's not you. Okay. All right. You, you already got your feet wet. You already know that it produces a return. Mm -hmm. We're just using poor execution, poor budgeting and planning for it. Okay. So um, you're going to you're going to be investing somewhat upwards of about twenty five hundred dollars a month. Okay. on your ads and because you're a local business we can probably get away with just a little bit less than that mm -hmm. but I want to go ahead and frame your expectations now tell me um, how you feel about that that's scary but I feel like it's necessary but I know that ads are something the more you put into it correctly that will have a good payoff so mm -hmm. okay. scary necessary are you gonna do it I would do it I would do it I would do it. We no, I will. I will. We have had meetings with marketing um, agencies before, but not directly like an ad agency. A lot of it was just social media marketing in general, mm -hmm. like posting and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be open to doing it with someone who's specific for ads. Mm -hmm. So I sign up. I actually am taking a course, but mm -hmm. Get I know out of that. just your let it CEO. Go. Yeah. And unfortunately, while I applaud you for your further continued education, you remind me so much of myself early on because I needed to understand all the asset aspects of my business. And I'm going to take a class, honey. All right. I will yeah. figure out joy of these ads. You hear me? Yeah. Just um, let it go. But mm -hmm. this is not a good use of your time. Yeah. Your time needs. What's your role in the company? Do you teach anymore? I do. Okay. And do you go out and procure new business? I do. Okay. That's where your lane is. You can't teach, run ads, do payroll, manage team, get new business, uh, and, and be in classes learning how to do something that you're not natively great at. Yeah, that's where the overwhelm is coming in. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's that. Repeat after me. Ads are no longer my responsibility. 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 Because quite frankly... Quite frankly, because quite be frankly, because quite frankly, I suck at it. I suck at it. Major, 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 <laughs> major. Look into this camera right here. Major. I suck at it. I suck at it. Major, major. All right. Ads are no longer. Ads are no longer. My responsibility. My responsibility. All right. Let's <laughs> get it. The branding, the rebranding. Repeat after me. I work in, an, in a creative industry. I work in a creative industry. And my branding will also be creative. And my branding will also be creative. As 100% of my target audience. As 100% of my target audience. Are creatives. Are creatives. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at how that all aligns and makes right? sense. It's almost like you're a business coach or something. It almost is like <laughs> I kind of might have known what I'm, know what I'm doing or something before. Look at that. Yeah. No, but seriously, you are dealing with a group of creatives, especially the adults. They need to come mm -hmm. by and they need to feel inspired by what they see. Agreed. The culture starts right here with the first mm -hmm. point of contact. It could be your Instagram page or your social media. It could be your website. Whatever okay. they see first is where their perception of your culture starts to get created. I agree. Okay. And, and that website also doesn't command top dollar. Okay. Okay. All right. So there is that. Um, in addition to that, when we're talking about acquisition, um, I also, you're already doing the free trial class. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that you have a person, and I think you do, a person whose job is dedicated to outreach. 
Oh, is that you? No, I was. <laughs> it is. It is me. But I was just thinking about I should find someone almost like a headhunter, a salesperson. Just, yeah, you need a salesperson. That's person. their job. You need. But I don't know where to start with that, but I have had that thought that I need to, and I agree. Let me give you two words of where to start. Okay. Where to start with finding this staff member? This is one of the most um, unique concepts, like ever. Indeed. You're recording. Job ad. Job ad. Oh my god. <laughs> Profound. But I didn't know if there was a company that did it. That's what I that's what Yeah, I, I mean, was there probably going. are um headhunter comp you mean to hire an agency that would do this for you? That would generate, yeah. Yeah, I mean can, but because you're about to increase this budget and ad spend, I don't think you can do both. Okay. Okay. So if I had to prioritize where your budget Just needs hire. to go, it needs to go to like the you need to go to marketing, but it's important to have that catch plate in there, mm -hmm. that person in there that acts as the catch plate to not let that business, that's those leads that come in, not turn into business. Okay. So I would hire somebody whose job is, this is a friendly person. This is someone who's personable. This is someone who loves what you guys do at the dance studio. They know a little something about the technique. They can't wait to be like, oh my God. So you wanted to register... Um, or, you know, whatever that voice is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is, is your staff predominantly or is your student clientele predominantly black, white, mixed? Black. All right. So you definitely want somebody who's on the phone, they're upbeat, and they're still professional. Like, oh, my God, absolutely, yes. So we do hip hop here. We actually also do jazz. We can do a touch of both. Now, what you really want is jazz's class. Mm -hmm. Jazz has a way. I know it's ballet, but it's everything that your teen is looking for. You want somebody mm -hmm. who can speak in that language. I have someone in my head. They Just know speaking. how to build a relationship, honey. They're going to talk to everybody who comes through that door. And you're like, girl, let them come in this door. And mm -hmm. that's the person that you want there. But you also want them to be somebody who listens well and they can close. Okay. Not just a talker. Because talker, talker, talkers never close. They're okay. doing more talking mm -hmm. than they are listening. Okay. It needs to be somebody who loves to build relationship and connection. Your lead will be happy to hear from them. And they know how to, they're comfortable asking for the money, okay. meaning asking for the registration. Okay. Okay. And I would recommend you offer them what, um, you offer them a free class already. Mm -hmm. And then if they go ahead and register that day, they get 10% off. Um, they get 50% off of their registration fee. 50% off their registration fee. How much is the re registration fee? $30. So then it's $15. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the price of the class. So what I would do is if somebody doesn't register. Okay. And you have to put your sales associate on the phone with them. I say, we want your student. We want your daughter here so bad. Cause you only serve girls, right? We serve um, boys. As well. Okay. We want your child here so bad. This is what I'm going to do. I know that I'm authorized to completely waive the registration fee. Mm -hmm. If you register right now, I'll go in with you on the back end and completely waive, waive the registration fee, but you do have to register right now. Mm -hmm. It's an incentive that's kind of like, uh, it's a sales strategy where you make that customer feel really special, like they're getting a favor, okay. right? And you want to make sure that salesperson already understands how far they can go in the give. Okay. So if it's like, I can give you one more free class and waive your registration, if you register first, because you got the credit card on file, okay. right? We're thinking about the recurring revenue model mm -hmm. aspect. So we don't really care about giving away another free class. We need you, we care about the next 10 months. Okay. Okay. So I would definitely do that. Um, also, are you doing any kind of outreach in, I, I know that you go to the school, to the daycares, but are you doing any kind of outreach to the local schools in the area? Yes. Yeah, so we do like a flyer drop off and then we'll do open houses at the beginning of the school year, but mm -hmm. nothing really mid season. Oh, I do have like a school no. tour I'm doing in two weeks though at, at one of the elementary schools. No, 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 no. A couple yeah. of things. Number one, beyond even the school system, you need to have an open house once a month. Okay. Okay. You have an okay. open house once a month. Your open house is refreshments, water, juice, snacks, whatever that looks like, and an opportunity to just kind of peek in and see what's happening here. Okay. You're walking in them around the studio. We've got, you got a TV in there. You got a TV that's demonstrating some of the dance techniques, something that may not be seen there. You've got the iPads ready to go if okay. there's a class happening that's not in the genre of dance that they want to be a part of. And oh, no, I'm sorry. We've got the toddlers in here today. You said that your kid is 13. Let me just show you real quick. Here's what we do. Here's what we're doing in the 13 year old class. 
this is amazing. Now, this is jazz. Jazz okay. is special, okay? And and that's because you know that jazz's class needs more students. Okay. All right? Okay. So you need a monthly open house. Okay. Period. When a realtor is trying to sell a house, do you think they only do one open house? No, they're going to do it until the house is sold. Okay. So you need a monthly open house, and okay. you need to make sure that it's on a day where parent a day and a time where parents aren't exhausted from work, rushing through traffic, make it as easy as possible. Mm-hmm. Saturday is great. Yeah, we have classes Saturday morning, so I could do it during that mm-hmm. those classes so that mm-hmm. they can see the. Yeah, and if you're doing open house, if you're finding that you're, there's two different types of open house you probably need to do. Okay. Um, you need to do an open house for the kids sector, and you could also do an open house for the adult sector okay. as well, right? And it's just acclimating people to your environment, what you offer, all those good things. Okay. For the kids, if there's an extra room that's not being used during that open house hour, I will create an environment where they're in there making friends. Okay. Kids tell parents what to buy. Okay. They pick that toy off the shelf. Okay. They tell you if they like their babysitter. The kids are going to pick that dance class too. Okay. So this is an environment where parents and kids must be there. And okay. that while you're walking around, there's a place, oh, we've got refreshments in here for the kids. Okay. And they're in there making friends. And when that parent sees that their kid is comfortable in that environment, guess what they want to do? Sign them up. Sign them up. Okay. All right. So we've got that. Um, in addition to that, though, I would think about, um, I would talk to the Marietta school system or the Cobb County school system, I think it is. Mm-hmm. And see how you can become approved for field trips. Okay. Nobody, another dance studio is doing that. Okay. See how you can become approved as I'm a approved vendor. You are approved County. vendor for sure. So yeah. now we already know that you can do um, field trips. Okay. So I would offer some type of a field trip and you can offer a couple throughout the year okay. where there is a minimum and maximum sign up okay. and they get to come and spend the day and learn dance. That's a really great idea. I know, right? You would think. I know. I coach entrepreneurs. Man, Jesus and well. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing that I'm going to touch on for customer acquisition is in um, is uh, implementing some type of a strong referral system. Okay. okay. This is not just word of mouth. If, if the majority of your business is happening through word of mouth, then we need to, uh, we need to reward those people well, okay? Yeah, I feel like they get rewarded, but they're not. I don't think it is enough to make them. They're not excited about it. Yeah, yeah. So what do you do now? They just get a cre- like a class credit, a credit on their account for how much? It's like a discount. I think that's thirty dollars. How much is a class? So not a class credit. I'm saying like a credit on their account, so their tuition in the next month is like thirty dollars less. Got but you. And how much is tuition? Tuition for one class a month is eighty dollars. I mean, one class a week is eighty dollars a month. Okay, so, so that works. Um, but I send it out, and I don't think people, like, I don't think they care. So sending it out isn't great. I mean, no. you can't just send that kind of thing via email. No. You have to have a flyer drawn mm-hmm. up, like a cute little postcard flyer drawn up uh, to put in their kids' okay. dance bag, in their okay. little gym bags. You have to let parents know when they come in, oh, hey, John did so good today in class. Don't forget to send his friends. He'll get a, you'll get a $30 credit on the account. Yes. We have bring a friend week too. Bring a friend week, but there needs to be a reward for it. Bring a friend and you get, people want to be incentivized. They consumers no longer need to build your business for you. They don't want to do it, but if you reward them, they're excited to do it. Okay. Okay. So you can do um, things like that. You can even do the bring encourage them to bring a friend during open house. Okay. Um, that's something that you can do as well. Do you do sibling discounts? Yes. Perfect. Um, do you do bestie discounts for adults? No. Okay. So if they register together, start doing a bestie discount. Okay. Okay. So give them something, do it similar to how you would do a a sibling discount. Okay. And so that would incentivize people to stay longer because if each, let's say if each class is $50, and it's 50 for me, but 30 if I bring a friend, that's 80 together. So we end up both paying 40. We both save. Okay. I'm going to stay. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Joya, what you thinking? I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. You over there just smiling away. I, I like all of the advice is such, it's, it, yeah, it's such good advice. I mean, I mean, you're rocking and rolling, but it's really good advice. Rock and roll even yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we got that. Um, increase your volume. We're good to go there. Currently running ads. That was the second challenge. Mm-hmm. 
we're off we're, we're offloading that you're going to delegate that okay. so we've taken care of that um, we're talking about better systems and daily operations um, better systems where it comes into your daily operations you said you specifically wanted more time and less overwhelm yes. um, one of the things that we took off your plate is the paid advertisement um, we also are going to get a person in place now to handle your outreach for your yes. sales your salesperson in place I would call them more like an enrollment specialist, um, not a salesperson. So, oh, we'd love for you to talk to our enrollment specialist. Okay. Okay. So we've taken that off of your plate as well. Everybody in there, in terms of your admin team, who exists? Um, admin, we just we have a main manager and then we have two interns. Who okay. Come in in exchange for like free adult classes. Okay. Um, are they focused when they're working? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're great in their roles. Yeah. Do they have defined roles? So we're defining their roles now. Okay. So we just um, added them into Asana and started to assign them tasks and assign their, them their own specific roles. Okay. And things to do each week. Okay, perfect. I think that's going to start implementing better system, better oh. process or workflows. And I hired a VA too. You a have a VA? A couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And what did they do for you? The VAs, they kind of just prepare the social media so I can get it all planned out. Don't do that. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> we um, got a few minutes. What's your, um, what's your Instagram? Divine Dance ATL. Okay. Yeah, so they mainly help with that and getting that scheduled. They just started the Dun, 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 dun. I know. <laughs> so this isn't bad. Um, Divine Dance ATL. This isn't bad, but it's also not wowing. Okay. It's not great. When we see dance, um, we want to see dance. Like these images are very far back. Uh, so I would probably use like some cover images, just like if you were making a reel for yourself on your personal page, Okay. put some cover images up there and make it look real good. Oh, of the videos of the videos. Okay. Yeah. So I can see really well what this is. Okay. And, um, I probably also, uh, do something better with the lighting. You might want to put like some soft box, like what we have here. Okay. You might want to put some soft box lighting in your studio okay. because your images are only going to do as well as the quality of the images. Okay. Okay. So you're getting the right kind of content. It's just a little too dark okay. um, to really make any noise. So get some get some additional lighting. Okay. Um, but also what I don't see is um, I, I see a lot of children. I don't see evidence of grownups. I'm having to scroll, scroll, scroll before I see something. These are grownups. They're just, they just look like teenagers. <laughs> Those are adults. That's a grown-up? Yeah, that's an adult class. Okay, so yeah, these are really bad okay. images because they look so tiny with yeah. that image being far away. But put something there that says, check out our adult. Adult. Uh, what is this? Expressions and in in intent class. Okay. Okay? So let me know. Check out our toddler class. Check out okay. our th ages three and four class. Check out our adult class. Um, when you have adults that are coming in, let's make some commotion about it. So you've got this choreographer okay. who's teaching. Um, tonight, our adult class is featuring the great blah, 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 blah. Okay. Like pretend that Beyonce's choreographer is teaching at your studio okay. um, this week. And so then we want. Um, hold on a second. Oh, she's pregnant now, so it's not a whole lot um, for her. Hold on one second. I'm trying to find a dance page to show you the difference in how you present and how they present. Okay. Shout out to Tia Rivera. She is one of Beyonce's former dance captains. I actually took her dance class, the dance class that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but she's also got like a lot of personal life and stuff fun on her dance page. 
But if you're looking at her page, like just these cover images that are hitting, mm -hmm. like you can tell this is sexy. I mm -hmm. want to take a look at that. Right. This yeah, is that. I follow her. We've got a group. So, you know how she yeah. presents and how those be like I would find my favorite choreographers okay. who teach and produce similar content. Okay. Why? Because they travel from city to city to city and wherever they go, their classes are sold out. Okay. Okay. I would also maybe think about inviting one of them to come and teach a class mm -hmm. and you are inviting one of them to teach a class. Like if you're getting one of these influencer um, choreographers, I would have them come teach a class, be able to make money there. And I would test out, I don't know what the pay structure is for that, but if this is a Tia Rivera, a Joey Chavez, and this is what they do, they, I went to Tia's class and that room probably was supposed to hold 30 people. Mm -hmm. It was like a hundred dancers in there. They had people who paid, who were in the hallway, couldn't even see her. They could just wow. see what we were doing mm -hmm. and my, they were fine with it. Wow. So I would do a marketing strategy where I invited them to use your space for a dance class. And, um, I would probably let them keep all the money. Okay. And I would consider it a marketing investment. Okay. Okay. That's Mark. We have, I don't know, $2,000 a month to spend in some kind of outreach marketing outside of paid ads. This two thousand dollars, I'm gonna bring in someone like a Tia Rivera to host an adult dance class. Why do you think you're doing that? To just make noise about the studio, let people know that we're there, get them in the door. How much is an average adult class? Uh, twenty dollars. An average adult class is twenty dollars. Yeah. So maybe for this person, mm -hmm. who's we're gonna make all this commotion about Beyonce's former dance captain, she teaches here, here, here. We've got all this crazy content showing what she's done. Maybe for this class, it's a $25 class or a $30 class, okay. right? So if this person, how much would you normally charge someone to come in there and do, you don't do that. They're just all on staff. Um, no, we don't, but we just had someone email us who I was considering ha doing that with. Okay. It was how much, how many students on average is in an adult class average? I would say 10, 10 students and it's $20. Yes. Okay. So typically it's $200 that you're generating from this class, right? Revenue. So let's say that you tell someone they can come out and do a dance class as large as they like. They keep 100% of the revenue okay. and do your, um, do your, uh, use your facility for free. The dance class price probably needs to increase first of all to like $25. I would do some market research. I would encourage you to do market research. I'm pretty sure they're more than $20. Well, we okay. Just increase the price. Oh, now you can grandfather the people who are currently in yeah. at that price for X amount of time, but then you can get new people. Anybody who's coming new through the doors, they need to pay a higher price, but that price needs to be based on market research. Call, call some of the more popular dance studios in okay. the area. And then you come in right under that. All well, right. We have a membership too, where people pay a certain amount per month and then they get $5 off. Perfect. You can do that, but we got to raise all the prices, okay. including the membership price. Okay. So let's just say the average class is $30, right? Okay. A Tia Rivera or a Joey or anybody who comes into your studio and teaches, they book a class. They've got this large following. They've got 50 girls okay. and guys come out for this adult class. You've created such an experience in this studio mm -hmm. from the parking to the hello to the do you need anything, to the bringing them water, to the blah, 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 to the information that you're going to give them. Hey, we want you to come and teach. The only thing that I want you to do is encourage them to join our dance studio. Okay. Okay. So now you've got 50 girls. Let's say 50% of them decide to come and do another dance class. Now at $30, you've now increased your revenue for that class by $550. Imagine you're doing this over and over and over, but that's just on a one-off class, right? Okay. So your revenue goes from $200 a class on average to $750 a class on average. Imagine some of these girls come every single week. Mm -hmm. How long is the average dancer with you? Um, the adult class dancers, mm -hmm. I would say probably a year. A year? So you, like out. once a week for a year? Mm -hmm. Maybe once or twice. Okay. So let's just go with once. Okay. You just went from, remember this number 750, Joya, that's on you. Okay. You went from $200 on average a class for 52 weeks, $10,400 mm -hmm. from one adult class, right? 70, $750 mm -hmm. 
because you're now investing in these influencers to come out with these large followings. $750 times 52 weeks is $39,000. You've literally just increased $29,000. That's one class. That's one class. So if you, how many adult classes do you do a week? Um, 14. Times 14 classes. That's $546,000 in adult classes. adult classes. Which is one third of our revenue. Which is one third of your revenue. Mm-hmm. But then you do the same thing for kids. We just do it in a different way, right? But that's, that's now increasing not only your volume, but also increasing your marketing also increasing your bottom line. Now, yeah. those were low, low, low baseline numbers. So if I am you, the first thing I'm going doing when, when I go home is hiring the person to do the rebranding. Mm-hmm. I am, and I want a complete branding package. That means I want the uniforms, the hats, what the, the t-shirts the kids can pick up and wear. All these things need to say this studio. So when mom is out there with the kid dance uh, at the grocery store, oh, you guys go to Divine. I've been looking at Divine. What's your experience like? Oh, mm-hmm. let me tell you about it. And you know what? If you use my referral code. When I was walking in today, um, someone emailed about new merchandise and they said, do you want us to give you some free mock-ups? And Because um, your stuff sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't know, but it was oh, a trust random me, they person. Know. Well, I signed up for them and they just said, like, you never, you never bought today? anything. No, like... Uh, they, I signed up for their program a couple months ago mm-hmm. and never bought anything. And they just said, like, we noticed you didn't buy anything. Yeah, I'm you looking at the logo on your shirt. To make it. I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, and and neither here nor there, yeah. you want a complete branding package. Okay. Now, a complete branding package done correctly with quality, high resolution, is mm-hmm. going to cost you somewhere between five and ten grand. Yeah. Okay? Um, I have a person that I can refer you to who does all of our branding for full transparency, actionable CEO, social proof podcast, much of our merch. I'll refer you to them. I don't get anything for that. I'll give you that person. They're top of the line. Um, And I'm talking about branding like the bags, the dance bags that Mm -hmm. the girls are wearing. Oh, you forgot your stuff. Blah, 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 blah. The water bottles the mom are drinking. Everywhere mom goes, she needs to be marketing dance studio. I'm talking about your, like when your, um, when you have a student reach a time milestone, When you have a student that reaches a time milestone, like they've been with you for six months mm-hmm. consecutively, maybe mom gets a tumbler. Okay. With the dance studio, it's a gift. Oh, we noticed that you've been here for six months. Here's your tumbler. Okay. Okay. Those are little things that you can do to make people appreciate you, mm-hmm. to make people want to stay, to make people brag about what you do. Okay. Go ahead, Joya. All right. She's got to take a cute a bathroom break. Go ahead. Okay. Go, 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 go. All right, cool. So those are some things that you can do. Tell me so far how you feel about that. About all of it. Mm-hmm. I feel like there are changes that are necessary and they're definitely doable. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like the rebranding and like the changing everything, I think that's something that could be easily implemented mm-hmm. and make a big difference. Mm-hmm. Especially the sales, well, the enrollment specialist. The enrollment specialist. What That's do you think just... about the leveraging some really popular influencer dancers? I think it's come? a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, we had someone email us this week who's very well known. So okay. that's probably where I'll start. Oh, yes. Um, and then, I mean, at least confirmation. Has a lot of, well, when you <laughs> said influencers too, instead of just like professional choreographers, there's so many people in Atlanta who just have a good following anyway Mm -hmm. so just reaching out to them about the free space Mm -hmm. to do a class I think would make a big difference well if they're not dancers that doesn't work no no they're dancers oh gosh I'm saying they're not like perfect what at first I thought you meant people who are not here and traveling and doing professional choreography but there's a lot of people here who have a good following who I think could do a free class as well Mm -hmm. and would still have a big impact yeah and um, you are in the mecca of, of super successful entrepreneurs right now. Mm-hmm. You can also think about, um, you know, not just right in the dance industry, but maybe there's a community, a large community of people like at the gathering spot or mm-hmm. organizations like that, that host all these entrepreneurs like, hey, you have a really large network I, and a kid. I'd love to tap into it. Is your child interested in dance? I'd love to offer your, you know, your kid special incentives for, uh, maybe even free 
half price, heavily discounted, a really, really, really low cost membership, whatever it is. Okay. If in exchange, every time your child is here, you, you know, you shout us out, you post okay. us on social media or whatever. And so those things will also be able to grow your business. That one could be a little tricky. I know if I still had a small child, I might not want them to know where she attended or he attended dance class, uh, but it's, everything is pitchable. Everything is worth trying. Yeah. Does that make sense? It definitely makes sense. Okay. Um, and you can even host like, um, I would pick like some entrepreneurs and do like a little CEO dance day. Okay. So like think of all these themed things that you can do that will bring in new traffic that you don't always get in the business. Okay. That's a really, really good one. Like little CEO dance. Okay. All right. And what that means is your mom or dad is an entrepreneur you have this curated day okay. where this group of entrepreneurs, you're marketing to these entrepreneurs. They bring their kids in for a two hour dance, you know, situation. And that's that. And at the end, you invite them to become members, okay. but they pay you for that. So like, this is a paid, this is a ticketed event. Like okay. the ticket is $30, $40, $50 okay. for this special event. This ticket is, it, this is a ticketed event, right? Okay. 20, 34, I mean, 30, I would say 30, 40, yeah. $50 uh, for this event is specifically for this. Okay. You can even do the same for like beauty industry pros, okay. like beauty industry, blah, 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 blah. You can do like, come on in. You can host like, um, you can have like on, I don't know how much extra space you have, but you can do random things. Like you can do a Saturday camp, like a, da a mm -hmm. Saturday dance camp. And I would uh, I would target parents who work on Saturdays mm -hmm. who need somewhere for their kids to go on Saturday. Okay. <laughs> Have fun. Right. So all kinds of things you can do. Um, Asia, this is a good starting point for you. OK, um, I really, really, really think you need a VIP day, though. You're ready for one. So I've been looking. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. You need to move from looking to booking, yes. okay? I want you to start with what you have now. Let's assess, like, in maybe two weeks after you've made this. This uh, will all be done by the time the episode airs. This will all be done. As okay. far as getting all the website stuff fixed and everything. For sure. Like, these are all easy things to mm -hmm. start putting in motion. I want you to start there. We don't need to book anything right now. Start okay. there. Implement that. Uh, make a decision about how you feel about it, how you see it being advantageous to your business. And then based on that, we'll schedule or not a VIP day. I feel very, I feel good about it. Yeah. There's nothing you've said that I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. But yeah. All of that I think is beneficial. Yeah. Are you guys less nervous now? No. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Joya. <laughs> <laughs> you're less nervous now. Asia, you're all this good info I just gave you and you're still nervous. No, I'm nervous. I'm it's not nervous about the situation. It's just like, okay, well, we got work to do. Kind of nervous. Right. You got work go. to do. Yep. You got work to do. But I'm excited too. Yeah. Execute it properly. Doing everything we talked about, mm -hmm. right? You could easily have a super high level six figure, even, even mm -hmm. a seven figure level, but it's going to take you locking in and taking risks in terms of trying new things. It's going to take you being innovative and really getting down to being creative and saying, I love the way this studio does this, but I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to make it my own. I'm going to innovate in this way. You're at that. You're, you're right at that place. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can feel it for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Joya, what was your love experience it. today? I love it. It was like tough love. Mm hmm. But you know I'm built for it. Super. So I'm going to get it done, crush it, and I think you're going to be wildly surprised. First of all, I'm not going to be surprised at all <laughs> because I expect you to be great. Okay. There is an energy inside of you that's built for this. And what I want you to understand is sometimes we just need that simple tweak. Yeah. You're not going to surprise me at all. I know that you're going to get it. Like, I know. I just don't know when I said what I said earlier. It's like, is she ready to receive that right now? Like, are you ready to to break up with with what you were doing right I now? I knew exactly what you meant. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. was like seeing but, inside of my heart. Yes, I knew. Yeah. Yes. But don't get it twisted for sure. Yeah. I am not going to be surprised. <laughs> I'm going to be like, girl, about time. Let's get it. Now, let's <laughs> right. do the next thing. Both of you guys have. Amazing business ideas. I thank you so much for taking your time out of today. Thank you. Yeah, thank like, you so thank much. Thank you. This was like a dream come true. Aww. 
That's amazing. Yeah. Yay. Uh, imagine if we work together all the time. Man, mm-hmm. we're going to get there. Well, we're here. We're here, and you guys are an actionable CEO. So before we wrap up, can you, um, Asia, tell me, I'm going to ask the same of both of you. Okay. Tell me both what made you choose Actionable CEO to register the mentorship community, Actionable CEO, and what your experience has been so far. So when I found you online on YouTube, it was actually in the summer. We had just moved to a bigger facility and I binged everything, every single interview, every single podcast, every old episode I was scrolling through. Like, okay, which ones were Donnie on? Let me go listen. (laughs) Um, And there was just so much information and so much knowledge. And it's crazy that you said, yeah, you remind me of myself because I'm looking at you and I'm like listening to your story saying, this is where I could be because I could see that the similarities. Mm -hmm. So when you open Actionable CEO, I was like, I definitely need to join. I was actually in another mentorship program. I said, cancel. Oh, and um, redirected my funds to actionable CEO. And I haven't regretted it at all since it's constant mentorship and actionable items that you can Mm -hmm. actually implement in your business. But other than that, it's just the accountability, Mm -hmm. the book club, like everything that we discuss, the community. It's been such it's it's actually such an underpriced experience. But don't raise the price. Huh. But um, you said but, un- she said under price. <laughs> but Dang. you get so much Coach out me, of it. Girl. Coach me. <laughs> but don't yeah, grandfather. <laughs> right, right, um, sure. okay. But you get so much out of it, and it's so beneficial to your business. I think even the systems that we discuss, even if they're things that I already know, it's just reminding me to implement them mm-hmm. and keeping me on my toes and keeping me motivated and just on fire for my business. Um, and I was coming out of a really hard time. So just getting back to that place where I was excited to do things, I definitely think that actionable, actionable CEO was a big part of that. Mm, thank you. And I would pay it a million times over. I so. love <laughs> that for you so much. I do. I do. Joya, what made yes. you decide to, to choose actionable CEO and how has it helped you since you've been a member? Oh, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> So I was following you and David from the beginning Mm -hmm. and I knew of David from Cumberland because I used to pass his kiosk all the time. So when you guys started the platform, I was following, but then you went over to full transparency and then you were doing both. So one day during your podcast, you were like, text me Mm -hmm. and you can be a member of my community, mm-hmm. but it was an actionable CEO. It was post to pay. Yep, mm-hmm. it was post to pay. And then I got ready to join post to pay. And one day you were like, I've started a community. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? So once I got the um, text, then I was like, okay, I'm going to, because I had been looking. Mm-hmm. And the ironically, I found a coach who happened to be at your uh, full transparency anniversary dinner. Mm -hmm. She was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I was ready to cross that line of the burning sands. And then life started Mm lifey and I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So I was very depressed. Like, Oh my God, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. And so I had all these interns. I had no direction. Ironically, when you said, text me, I'm doing the community. And then that first time you immediately started talking about Tony Robbins. And I was like, Oh, that's why like here it is. So since then, like I said, I've transformed. I know I have a long way to go. I know that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm thankful about the information that you've given me here today. Cause had I not gotten here, I wouldn't have known all of that. But if you, so the contrast is what if you would have saw it when I, before I got to you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I made some strides and then even in my personal development and what I'm thankful about Donnie is that I can go and give that to my community. The things that I get in actionable CEO, I could give it out to somebody. So it's been, it's been amazing. I love that. Yep. Thank you both for sharing. Thank you both for being here. And thank you for watching. You are an entrepreneur right now. You pick something up. You retain something. Something was relevant and stood out for you. And I want to know in the comments what that thing is. What do you plan to work on? 
Um, what idea can you execute? Like, don't look at a literal uh, bi- uh, artist development, artist business development business. Don't look at a literal dance studio. See yourself in whichever model was most like yours and take some of those strategies that I gave them both. Go and do your own website audit. Go and do your own Instagram audit. And if you're not qualified to do it on your own, ask somebody who is. That said, I do invite you to join my mentorship community, Actionable CEO. I work with entrepreneurs who are interested in personal growth, professional growth, and financial growth from A to Z. You hear me? You can go to actionableceo.com to get more information and determine if the community is the best fit for you. I think it is. I think so. You think so? I think think so. Yeah. I think it is. It's up to you to take that leap and think for yourself. I'd love to see you there. Actionableceo.com. And we will see you next week. Bye.